This is the Eufy Home app as it pertains to the Eufy X8 RoboVac. Here we can see this is the main page when you first log into the Eufy Home app, which is different than the Eufy Security app or the Eufy Pet app. I kind of like the fact that they separate these uh, because it helps to keep the application itself really clean when compared to other apps. When you first log in, you have your one, in my case, RoboVac right there, the X8. You have the ability to add more stuff by clicking the plus sign in the upper right hand corner there. So you can vacuum, bulbs, smart plugs, smart switches. You also have a little help icon right there. Selecting that will allow you to pick which one you want to uh, ask questions about. And then they have chat, call us, or feedback, all from this area right here. We're gonna select back because you're interested in the actual RoboVac. So if we select RoboVac, you have a play button or we just tap on it and it brings us into the RoboVac screen itself. What you'll notice right here is the last map that the RoboVac actually used. The RoboVac does allow for multiple levels in your home, so it's always going to be the last one. You have a plus and minus sign over here on the right, so you can zoom in and zoom out, or you can also pinch to zoom to zoom in and out. You also have this icon right here. This actually rotates the map around. So for me, when it created this map, this is the way it had it oriented. Well, for me and the way my brain works and my home, uh, I generally look at this as, this is how my layout is. This is my front door, hallway coming in, living room area, dining room and kitchen. So I liked that better. So I swapped the map around and this is how it looks. Up here you have the square footage when the RoboVac is going around, minutes run, and right there is your battery indicator. It does not show you a percent there. I kind of wish it did, but it does not. Right there, that little green icon is your charging station location. And if I zoom in a little bit right here, that red line is actually a no-go zone that I set up. Now, to do any of that, you select edit map. So I can reset the map, meaning start over. I can manage my maps, which is how you have multiple levels. So in this case, this is my current map and this is my upstairs map, and I can use this map or edit this map, but in order to do this, you have to toggle on the multi-level managing. Coming back to our edit map, you have your edit room. So in my case, these are predefined rooms that were created and shaded different colors. If I select this room, I can rename it, or I can divide it, or if I select two rooms, I can merge them together to get rid of this differentiation. So if I select this one room and then select divide, you have a handle here, which you kind of plunk down where you want to divide the room. I will say you don't actually need to have it touch a corner. You can kind of drop that where you want. I'm gonna say no. So I like the room divider. It is a little less sensitive than some other RoboVacs that I've tried in the past. And coming back one more time, we have our no-go zones. And here you go. This is your robot's radius right there. So you can't place a no-go zone there, but you can select no-go or virtual boundary. So these two are virtual boundaries. A no-go zone is a square box that you can drop somewhere. A virtual boundary is merely a line that you can place across a specific area. And selecting either of them, you can adjust the size, you can rotate it around like that, or you can select the X to get rid of it. Anytime you make a change, you can always save. So that's all under our edit map area. And that's all just on this main screen, which falls under our auto. Now auto, you also have access to suction level, pure, which is the quietest form. You'll be able to hear TV and have the robot vacuum going. Power, which is pretty good power. You will notice it running around. Turbo mode, you're really gonna hear it. And then max mode, forget about it. It is going to sound like a jet fighter taking off, which is partially why you got this. IQ is so that when the robot vacuum transfers from carpet to wood floor, it will change the suction level as needed. We have our play right there, which actually sends the robot vacuum out to do its thing. And then we have recharge, which will, no matter where it is on the map, send it back 
to the charging station. Now, as the robot vacuum does make its way through the map, you will see a line indicating the pathway that it has taken and also lets you know where it has actively gone. Next tab, we have room right here, which will allow us to specify particular rooms that we want it to do. So if you didn't have any no-go zones or boundaries set up, you can go, I want my hallway, my living room, and my dining room, and then send it out on its way to do its thing. You will notice that unlike the auto page, we have a new icon down here in the lower right, and this is a number. So right now we have one or two. Selecting two means that the robot vacuum will do a complete circuit twice in each of these locations. This is how I tested the actual battery length because my rooms were too small, so I sent it out and did it twice. My one problem with the room selector is that it had a problem and it would go into my kitchen. That's why I put up these virtual boundaries. Next, we have our zone. Now, again, we have the number icon, which will allow us to go anywhere from one to three, so it will go three times. Now, with the zone, we have this other icon, we select, and then we drop in this is the zone that the robot will go to and then work within. Think of it almost as I want this area clean, nothing else. So in my case, this dark shadow is actually a litter box that I have. So I really want all this area around the litter box done. And then I want it done three times just to make sure that everything is clean. I then hit go and it goes to this location and within that box will vacuum three times. Next we have our spot. Now again, we have the ability to do one to three times and then the spot will drop a pin in the location that you want cleaned. Now unlike other spot cleaners which will spiral around, this one actually kind of has a box, very similar to our zone, but instead of selecting your zone, you just go, go here. It creates that box and then within that box, it will vacuum in a set pattern. So no spiraling. Now you can only select one spot. However, with zone, you can have multiple zones for it to go and take care of. And then you see with each of those zones, it's letting you know the actual size right there. It's a 10 foot zone. We're gonna get rid of these because we don't want them popping up. And like I said, spot is a single cleaning. We're gonna come back to auto because that's generally where you're gonna spend the most of your time, but for the settings for this, we come up to the sprocket icon in the upper right hand corner. Up at the top, it'll show you an image of your particular vacuum and the name as well as the Wi-Fi information. Right here, we have manage map. Selecting that will show you just what I showed you before, the two maps that I have. You can have up to three maps, so three floors. You have your scheduling. If you wanted to create a schedule, I don't have one, but I can say add a schedule. And then for this, you could select suction level, mode. Mode is always going to be auto clean because that's where it's gonna just go out and do its thing. You select time and then what days you want it to do that on. And then hit save in the upper right hand corner. And do I want to save changes? I say no, because I didn't make any changes, but I want to go back. So that is our schedule. Tap and go, kind of very similar. Tap somewhere, go here. There's a lot of redundancy in the app. So there's several locations that you can go to do things. Here we have manual controls. This is kind of cool if you want to hand the robot off to a kid or if you don't want to spot clean and have it go in a set zone, you can drive it around yourself using the controls. Notice it's not super finite because you can go forward and kind of left and right. There's no backup in this. Here you have spot clean, but again, it's not the spiral spot clean. It is that grid spot clean. And then you can send it back to recharge and always start. Now you do need to start the robot so that it comes off of the charging station and goes kind of out into the room itself so that you can start manually controlling it. Here you've got your cleaning history. It keeps track of all the times you've run it, as well as if we bring it up, it shows you a map with the room names and those white lines, as I said before, that indicate where it actively was cleaning. And here we go, this is the living area. The one thing with the maps, you'll notice it's not the orientation that I prefer, but it's in there. It shows you the square footage as well as the cleaning duration. Share settings, if we come in here, you can share your robot, but whoever you share it with will have to have their own UV Home account. Auto return cleaning, I have that turned on, so what it does is if you have a larger home or you've sent it out to clean a specific room several times, the battery might run out, this will allow the robot to come back to its charging station, charge up, and then go out and finish the job. I kinda like that. So it's a nice feature that it's there. You've got your do not disturb mode, which will allow you to turn it on and say, hey, do not 
run anything or send the robot vacuum out between this time period. You can set that up. Here we've got our voice settings. You have a volume control up here at the top, which is very important because the robot can be kind of loud depending on the voice that you have. For English, you have English male, female, and then a few other choices. I stuck with what I know. Here we've got unit setting. So you've got square footage or meters. Find my robot. Selecting this, you hit start. The robot will actually make a noise letting you know exactly where it is. And the volume of the find my robot is separate from the actual voice volume. So keep that in mind. Accessory services. This lets you know how much time you have left for your stuff. So in the case of the brushes, you'll have to purchase a new one. Same with the filter, you can clean it off. Sensor, this is one of the first times that I've actually seen a sensor reminder letting you know, hey, all those anti-collision, anti-drop sensors, you need to kind of keep up with that. And here you have, you may also need battery, filters, and then tape. Selecting any of these will actually walk you through a tutorial on how to clean or, in this case, purchase and reset the timer here. So I like that that's really just built into the app, makes it so much easier. And you have help and feedback. So just like you saw before, help and feedback. And then firmware updates. Now the firmware updates means that the robot will continuously become smarter as time goes on. Or if there's a problem, they'll be able to correct that problem in the future. Activity logs, well, that's kind of sending information to Eufy. You could choose to do that or not. I selected no. And then you can remove the device if you so chose. If we come back to our main page here, over here, these three dots, there's actually extra information. And I will run through this very quickly because like I said, it's all about redundancy with this app. Here you've got your account. I have my name. You have messages. In my case, it will tell me, hey, the robot didn't make it back to the charging station because when you're using it on the second floor, it can't make it back to the charging station on the first floor. You have your help and feedback and you have your Eufy Care right there. So how to actively take care of your device. You have your device sharing, just like you did before. Smart integration. If you have one of these smart assistants, you can set it up so that you can tell your voice assistant to have your robot go out and clean. You have your widget settings. So the widgets are actually this thing here. This is a widget. So by default, when you add your robot, you'll have a widget. If you have multiple devices, you will have multiple widgets that you need to set up. You also have the homepage layout, which is those widgets. How do you want them to lay out in the grid? You have dark mode, which is currently turned on. Language, obviously, self-explanatory. Time zone, select your time zone. Referral, if you are part of Eufy's referral system. Visit Eufy, so that will take you to the website, and about Eufy Home, and that will give you information about the Eufy app itself. And that has been a complete look at the Eufy Home app for the Eufy X8 RoboVac.